a thank you gift from the ranch. So today is going to be a great example of how we get things done. It's just going to be a very small condensed project that is an appreciation plaque for somebody that I came across recently. And we want to provide a, a deepest thank you, not only personally, but also from the ranch to this individual for his service to our nation and his service to those who have left the military service onto better and greater things in the civilian world. So uh, I'm going to take you through the plan of what I have in store, the process, and then we're going to look at the final product. Quick design here will be more or less the brand up top, a piece of barbed wire inscription and a piece of barbed wire and that'll be it. Initially I thought I was going to hand cut this. I wanted to just do a, a nice hand cut saw and just get it so it's more authentic. The only problem is me being who I am, I want things to be straight and square. I don't think doing that is going to look presentable because obviously it's going to hang up in his office. He's told me that he is interested in holding it up in his office and presenting it for us. So if anybody asks, they can see it and they can check it out. But I, I don't want it to be all crooked and cockeyed. So I think we're going to do an actual either skill saw or we'll just do a, a quick uh, chop saw and get this nice and straight. The top isn't entirely square, but that's assuming the top's going to stay because I do have to work around this staple. I might have to pull that out. I'd rather I not. It's really rough cut and it's really dirty. So um, what we'll do first is probably clean it off a little bit, make sure it's you know got some of the dirt, manure and stuff like that. Get it, um, not necessarily take it away, but just get it presentable and neat so that you don't have like dirt and stuff. I thought I wanted to use the big iron, a whole foot long, so 12 inches long. But this thing takes up a big, amount of space. So let's just, just for kicks and giggles, let's look at how much space this iron takes up from top to bottom is about five and a half inches. So that would take up half of my board that I'm looking to use. Um, cause if I'm going to keep it at a 12 inch length, that's going to use up a, a significant amount of space and keep in mind, I'm going to use a little bit of barbed wire and I am going to use a, an inscription plaque that we've already gotten fabricated and made. So, the, the, the plaque is three inches tall. So three inches combined with this is eight. That gives me four inches to work with. I could potentially use this one, but I think it's gonna be a lot of space. Well, let's check the small one. So this is right at three and a half, a whole two inches shorter. And if we stick it on here as well, that doesn't look as bad, does it? it and the thing is too, I'm not just looking height wise, cause obviously this is more than a foot but i'm looking i'm looking width wise here i think it's more symmetrical so honestly i really do think i'm going to do this uh what i will do is i'll start from the top if it really goes bonkers and and three sheets to the wind and just looks horrible i'll i'll use the bigger one but i think we're going to start with the smaller one That already looks a world difference. Just taking a bunch of dirt off, making it presentable. This one, I'm starting to get really hot. You can kind of see the cherry. I want to make sure it's a real good iron. I don't want to be slacking on the heat because this has got to be done right the first time. Just like we would with cattle or horses, we got to make sure that this is a really good and hot iron. I got water on here. Stick it right there. Feels pretty good. See how it turned out. Oh, man, that's a tough one. There's a divot in there. It's not taking my, oh, goodness, that's gonna be a hard one. That's okay. So what we need to do then, put that water back on there and we're gonna have to heat up that middle one real good now. Fortunately, I had to get the second brand done off camera because I was going as fast as I possibly could. So this one I got, I took my time more, trying to really get that cherry glow. What happened on the first one was the top and bottom were pretty good temperature. It could have been better. And so I took advantage of the redo. And I really got that center post really good because that's what happened. It wasn't, 
I was focused so much on the top and the bottom that it didn't get warmed up. So I really focused on eight and then I kind of worked on the outside edges and then I, I was able to sink it pretty good. This is nice and warm, getting nice and centered. You can kind of see, I don't know if the camera catches, but that moisture really dissipates in that center there. Oh, that's a good one. Our next part is the barbed wire. We know it's about five and a half inches across. So the hardest part was finding the end of this barbed wire, believe it or not. Um, I only need 10 inches, really. Five and a half, you know, it'd be 11 total, but um, we don't want it to go completely across. So I'm gonna go with 10. That's right here. We're just kind of guesstimating. We don't really need it to be super precise. So I'll go five. Just use our fence and pliers here. Cut right where we need. There we go. That's it. 10 inches of wire. While we're here, we're in the cut mood. We'll go five, which is about right there. Right on that twist. We'll cut two lengths of barbed wire. Like I said before, they're probably not going to be entirely the same length, but should be close enough. All right, how do they look? <laughs> One's a little shorter than the other, but that's fine. Center that and big enough distance, you're not going to really tell. I grabbed some spare staples for setting stuff on here. So I'll probably use two staples per barbed wire strand. This one is a little bit longer than the other. So if I go fully to the edge, like I had it kind of right there and then bring this over fully to the edge, you can see pretty good difference. So I'll, I'll try and maybe knock off just that end and then we'll center it so that both of them kind of sit something like that or maybe even like that. And then uh, we'll set the inscription right there in the center between them. That will indeed look good. And then I think what I will do is I'll, I'll staple, you know, one on each end. So seeing how much these are, I'll have to collapse the staples a little bit. I can also raise this ever so much, lower this, that'll work. And then I think what I might do, I'll try to do corners. Stick the corners on here. Like so, if I have to, I'll put them on the top and the top, bottom, and sides if we absolutely need to. I think sticking them in the corners might work. I revised the plan a little bit. I was going to originally put the plaque here and then the barbed wire afterwards, but seeing how much it bounced around, um, I had to kind of sink it. So I'm going to show you what I did with the first one using the bottom one. <laughs> and I've got the template staple here. I kind of know where I want to set it. Kind of looks yeah, like that ish. I can probably push it over just a little bit. So I'm going to set this second staple. So, there we go. Oh no. And I just split this block. Oh, that's a. That is a travesty. I was afraid something like that might happen. <sighs> Dang it. So this block just split. I gotta find, I'm probably going to have to tear this block apart and glue the inside of it and bind it on the back end. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Okay. Well, now we're gonna have to revise the plan. I did salvage it a little bit. So what I ended up doing was I finished tacking this in as best as I could. Now what you'll notice on the back though, is that there is a split. Yeah, just like that. So I have to be careful with it. Um, that staple on the back fell out and I think what happened was I struck it just enough um, coming backwards that it popped it because if you notice it's on the edge of that staple that it cracked. So I think it kind of helped create the fissure. 
So I'm just gonna have to come up with a solution to throw some really good adhesive into this crack. I'll open it up a little bit and then probably um, compress it and, and, and get it nice and tight. And then I might do a second layer on the very edge, kind of like a weld, like do one in the inside and then do one on the outside um, and just get it together. But I'm actually really thankful that it happened now because I don't have the plaque on yet. So that that is a good lesson learned. This is supposed to be a handmade gift using materials from the ranch. This is a brand, this is our brand. We made this branding iron. This is barbed wire from our fences, staples from our fences. And this wood is from the original homestead. So this is what happens when you have old stuff. It just breaks. So. I don't want to, to completely stop it. That it, it's kind of part of the story and journey that he can share with people. But um, it's just it's just one of those things that you can't get around age. So I'm doing my best to to work with what I'm getting. Um, I might do some pilot holes and try a different thing and a different approach on the plate. But we're almost done. We were almost done until this broke. So. Um, I just want to find a good way to get this adhered first, and then we'll start getting to the plate. I have some new ideas, but uh, this is part of the journey. I got some wood glue placed in there, and you can see it through the crack. And good conscience, I just couldn't give anybody a broken gift. So this will probably be either something that I do personally, or maybe I'll do it for the ranch as a way to kind of show off some of our heritage here and, and our history. But uh, this is not going to be a gift that I can afford to give to somebody. I just... I just can't feel too bad about giving them a broken item, so I'm going to give them a brand new one. The brand new one has pilot holes drilled, staples placed in there, two new strands of barbed wire, and then on top of that, here's the placard, and then I have a little backing that I'm going to put on the back of this little placard that you can hang from the wall. So that way, it'll be nice and easy and uh, a, a really convenient way to try and present it on a wall. Heating up the brands the old-fashioned way, like you would in a little prairie cooking fire or campfire we're gonna try and get these irons nice and red hot and then we'll administer them to the top of the appreciation plaque Wood is not as forgiving as a hide. That's perfect. That's what I wanted. Now that this is done, this is set, it's ready to go. I simply need to add the hanger to the back, two small nails, and the backer, which will go like so. I already marked it with pencil, so. Should put the tip of that arrow right there. I think what I might do is I'll grab a square to make sure this is evened up with top edge. Square that up. Go. That is going to be absolutely perfect. Here's the final product. That turned out perfect. That's exactly what I wanted.